that abusive an abusive parent. parent. Sure, they're say. doing everybody a favor and getting these these people. Out. Who wants? A, would you like a child molester I, living next to you, Sarah? I have to say, I would not. I would but not. I don't think don't any care of their said, I don't think the parents deserve to die. I think they deserve to be punished for what they did to the children. But, but they I don't think be. they deserve to die. At the same time, I think one thing that there is a critical That's distinction um, between somebody who fights back against a perpetrator that is raping them, threatening to kill them, attacking them with butcher knives, than somebody like a serial killer who goes up and selects an innocent person that they don't know and murders them for whatever, you know, their own pleasure or their own reasons mm -hmm. in, because they were abused. It's different when you're fighting back against your perpetrator than when you're attacking Joan, bystanders. Joan, you wanted to respond to that. I don't know if everybody aware, is aware that when these people were killed, they were not only murdered, they were slaughtered to death. I have seen the pictures of the dead parents. How did you see these pictures? They were on the board in the courtroom. The mother's cheek was blown off. When Lyle Menendez, in his Laurence Olivier performance, was questioned. Have you ever been sexually abused? How do you know they were sexually abused? Have you ever? How do you know they were abused? And they had Do you know what fear is like? How do you know what went on? Do you know what fear is like? I'm tired of hearing Lawrence Olivier, by the way. It's getting boring. That's right. It's getting boring. Hold on a second. Karen, you've also talked with family members. I've talked to one of the aunts, yes. And 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 what did she say? I talked to uh, their Aunt Marta, who was Jose's middle sister, and she was very... Jose? Uh, Menendez. The father. Yes, the father. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, she was just a very... I, I went up to her and I said, listen, I really couldn't... I feel compassion for you. I have a brother, sister-in-law, and two little nephews, and I feel so much for you. She, we hugged each other. She was just a very warm person, and she said to me four words. She said... Please pray for me, for them. And I just was, first of all, I was like a, an agnostic person, you know, I don't believe in God. And I started praying and things have helped and happened. And I pray for them and I pray for the family and I pray for people I care about and love, my family. So when you, do, do other people respond to you like this? Do they say, well, you are nuts, what are you doing? Sometimes, and I just laugh it off. I don't care if people call me groupie or whatever it is. I know what I am. I'm secure with myself. Mm -hmm. I care about them as individuals, okay? I care about a lot of people, but that doesn't mean... Mm -hmm. Keep going. Okay, anyways, that's all I want to say. I'm just, I'm tired of hearing, you know, everybody has a right to their opinion, mm -hmm. but so do I. And so does everybody else in this audience, okay? I have a statement to make to the woman that wants to be an attorney, and uh, that is um, there's different types of crimes concerning taking somebody's life. Sometimes it's justified, and even if it's not justified, there's different degrees. Right. What these two brothers did, from what I understand, what I've seen, uh, they took their parents' life in premeditated murders, what no, they did. They planned it, no question about it. Let me finish. I, I'm not finished yet, and before you respond, I would like to make uh, a, a statement concerning this. If they had taken their parents' life in, while they were uh, in defense of their own lives, while they were abused, they probably would have been charged with manslaughter, and, it, and that would be the end of it. And chances are uh, they might have gotten off, too. Mm -hmm. Now, the manner in which they killed, do you know what a shotgun to, could do? Do you yes. own a yes. shotgun? My uncle Bud I'm a shotgun, shotgun shooter, okay? I'm a, I was a member of Lincoln Park Gun Club for many years. I'm a former mm -hmm. Chicago policeman. I'm not a gun nut, though. A shotgun is the most heinous weapon there is. It leaves gaping holes, and it, the manner in which they pump 12-gauge shotgun shells in them is merciless. It's okay. endless. I'd, I'd like to make a comment regarding yeah, that because... Something that people don't always understand regarding the brutality of this killing. I've seen the, I've seen the f photographs, the crime scene photographs, too. Yes, it is appalling. It's bloody. It's a mess. But one thing you have to understand about the state of mind of somebody in their situation, it's very typical in um, parasite cases where parents are killed with, by abused children for there to be what's called overkill. The people don't... The, children that are shooting or whatever 
don't realize um, what's going on, don't realize the parent is no longer a and threat, aren't able... you feel aren't that's able, the situation here. Yes, aren't able to think, okay, I'm going to put one bullet in the back of their head. They're overcome with emotion. They just shoot until the gun is empty, and they don't even know what they're doing. Okay, yes. Yes. I was taught one thing, to respect your parents. I love my dad to this day. No matter how much he hit me, I love him, and there was no way in hell mm. I would bring a gun to my dad or anybody else. Right. Can I ask you? you no, no. When you get hit every day, you learn no fighting. Were you ever sexually abused by your father too? I've had people. I've had no, one person do that to me. But I father. have been bounced around garages. You I won't have answer been. the question. Okay, you answered it. Thank I you. have a great deal. He says he's been abused. He has been abused. I've been bounced one. around garages. <laughs> okay. I've been had the <laughs> beat out of me daily. Mm -hmm. So sorry. this makes okay. you go the well, other I way for violence. Guys. I want peace in my life now. Mm -hmm. I can't I stand, stand violence. When somebody well, starts violent getting right a now. high I tone, know. I know. I usually am the one to whimper down. Okay, let me. But let I me. can't stand this. Okay, let me take a break here. I'm going to have to take a break. This is all very interesting. We want to continue talking about it, what it is that, that, that these so people find that they need to support and the reasons why, and they're, they're discussing this rather eloquently, and I think there's a lot to be learned from this. When we come back, however, you're going to meet a woman who has also supported uh, Ramirez, Richard Ramirez, and a woman who supports De uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, who has written to him and corresponded with him. So stay with us. you wanted to respond to this woman Laura okay from a legal standpoint when I look when I looked at it I went in wanting to you know I, I pretty much had predisposed views but I thought okay listen to both sides the defense made a good argument it made me start questioning what I had already started to believe and that and when you have a doubt that's where the law comes in and says you need to give them that benefit of the doubt and that is why even though it may have seemed brutal a lot of things are brutal. You have to take the whole equation, start from the beginning, and go to the end to get your answer. If you start in the middle and get an answer, it may not be the right one. Okay, if you're just joining us today, we're talking with women who are supporters of the Menendez brothers, and they say that they need the support since they believe that they are victims of abuse. Yes. Putting all the facts aside that, you know, the whole ca court case and everything like that, it just seems to me um, these two children were not children. And at the time, they, it's not like an attacker on you, attacking you, and you're fighting them off, and so you right. kill them. Right. The guy was 21, and the other guy was 18. And they're, they're, they could have left, but I think... You have it, to, well, they they really have to understand, you understand have to their whole understand history and their experiences. You have whenever to understand they tried that. To fight back, whenever but, they tried to leave, they were struck down. But that's what, that's what, what you have to understand. Down. You know what, why don't abused wives leave? Why, exactly. don't, why, why didn't that gentleman leave and up there? Fear. I didn't okay. understand. Listen, when you They're have still a dependent problem on their parents. Fear, when you have a problem with fear, which I've had many times, a lot of times I don't think rationally. Okay, and I can do some crazy things. And you're dependent okay, and I think on everybody your parents. Everybody can be put so in Even if they do abuse you, you're dependent on them. Sir, what was... I said you're not thinking rationally now. They've tried. When this they whole thing to is so away, trivial, they, considering they what's going on in the world it. and what is sure. happening to people. And you guys are spending, you with kids, I mean, they should, you should be spending your time with them and not running around trying to help these guys with Well, you don't know me and you don't know what I do with my kids, so well, there's no fact know. that with you know about me. In the country, I don't know how bad me writing a 10-minute letter to, to somebody is. That's right, and if That's can make and my kids are in bed, yes. why can't I be on the it's computer? A right. They do say, sleep. I'm thinking about you. I believe in you. I'm praying for you. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes out of my out of my life. It's no big deal. Excuse me. Yes, Joan. <laughs> what kind of message does this send to society if you don't like your parents? If you're so-called child abused or whatever, if you got the money, go shoot them. You'll get off. This is a bunch this is of BS. That's but Joan, let me ask you a question as well. Do you have a family? Yes, I do. And you're spending a lot of time also away from them to say just the opposite. No, that's not correct. My daughter, in fact, is going to nursing school and lives by herself with her boyfriend. Uh-huh. But... You know, Just I'm sure people were sitting at home going, couldn't you crochet? Couldn't you do something I else? don't like to crochet. I'm an actress. 
you like okay. to be a yenta. Um, this is directed more towards <laughs> Laura. <laughs> you are up there and you're saying you want to be fair and you want to hear both sides of the story. Yeah. And I did. We have. It's too late for that. You can't hear the parent side of the story anymore. Well, I mean, what, how can you hear from their grave? You can't. Yeah, but I listened to the evidence from relatives, from friends. The defense presented... I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The sisters even said he was a bad guy. Mordecano said the only way Jose Menendez would be well, sucked They definitely would be wouldn't lie for him. I mean, I wouldn't lie for my brother or nothing, right. you know. That's nice. Well, the reason I'm saying well, that's, that's real nice. my comment is that I was abused as a child, and I went through everything that they went through, but I never went and killed my kids. Everybody and I got different. away when I was 16 years old. Everybody I moved out, and the only different. reason it took me that long is because I was f afraid of what was out there. Okay, and my husband different. abused me, too, and I finally left after four years. That's great. Right. And not everybody did. And, 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 and I left. That's okay, great. I didn't kill him. I, there was plenty of times that I would have left. That's great. And I got out. You're lucky. I'm sure. Part of the discussion here for people like that that have been abused and have been able to do something productive and constructive. Good for them. I yes. cannot, okay, I good cannot, for them. You know, I'm sure that everybody... More. But everybody is different. Every situation yes. is different. These That's boys right. did try to deal with this in other ways. They tried mm -hmm. to go to relatives. They tried to run away. And everybody they did turned their heads. And they were, they were shunned. They were punished. Right. They were raped as a result to and punish them money, for that. you have money, you have power, too. Okay, yes. I, I really have a statement. During some point of the trial, one of uh, Mr. Mendez's business associates or business partners, a longtime business partner, said he never evidenced any type of abuse of the boys. Uh, behind closed the doors? In front of people. Okay. You don't sodomize your sons. In, in front, front of, of everybody people. as no, a... Don't. This and is the don't entertainment take a bell for the evening. And whip okay, the hell out of them. I, I'm going to need to take a break here, but as I said before, we're not here to judge whether or not they're innocent or guilty. That is not for us to do. That's for a jury to do. Okay. It's for us to understand why the passion with a case like this. When we come back, we're going to talk to an expert who can tell, who can explain some of the reasons why there's so much passion around this case. And we're also going to talk to two women who are interested in other cases, cases like Ramirez and Dahmer, which cases these women say they would never be supported, uh, supportive of. We're going to find out why when we come back. So stay with us. who followed the Jeffrey Dahmer trial as well, right? And right. You, you took an understanding of the case and wrote letters to the attorney, talked with the attorney, mm -hmm. sent letters to him. Why? Um, I felt a kind of a... Um, I understood how he felt about the loneliness, about um, how he would kill people when he didn't want them to leave him. Mm -hmm. And um, I never felt like I wanted to kill somebody, but... Um, you understood the loneliness. Right. So what was it about his loneliness that made you reach out to him? Um, he Did just... you, didn't you read the case and say this is gruesome, this is sick? Right. You, you felt it was sick as well? Yeah, but he, you're saying sick like, like, let's, let's bury this in the ground. When somebody has cancer, you say they're sick. This is the same kind of sickness. There's something wrong in his head. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, it's, it's just like people with, with, uh, that are depressed. That, that's a taboo. You can't be depressed. Something chemical in his body in his brain that there's something wrong. So you identified with the loneliness uh -huh. and said, I'm going to write and support. Did he ever write back? No, he didn't. What is, you, you, but you spoke with the attorney. Mm -hmm. And what did the attorney say? Um, he basically said that he understood and that uh, he could use all the support he could get. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're still praying for him? Pardon? You're praying for him? I don't believe in prayer. You don't believe in prayer? Okay. No. Let me talk to you. This is Eva. You, you can stand here because oh, okay. this is interesting. Eva Ramirez. I don't write him anymore, though. You don't write Ramirez anymore, but no. you taught him how to write poetry. Mm -hmm. And he wrote you poetry back. Yes. Now who do you write to? Uh, I don't write to anybody, but I came here to talk about Manson. Manson? Mm -hmm. As in Charlie Manson? Yeah. <laughs> what is it about Charles Manson? Um, I think he got a bum deal. I don't, I think if anybody else was in prison for what he's in there for, they'd be out by now. But the media has made him such a bad person no. that he, I don't think he's ever going to get out. And mm -hmm. nobody wants to listen to him. People find him scary. I don't find him scary at all. The, the girls who, he didn't do it, the girls did. And they were on drugs when they did it. He didn't want them to be on drugs. How old are you? 16. Not even a lie when this happened. Not even a lie when this happened. Now, I know you all disagree with what they're saying, yeah. but what they're saying sounds similar in this respect yep. that they Mass say murderers. bum deal, they say lonely, 
misunderstood, abused. That's not being threatened to be killed, though. That's right. And the people that they killed, that's what did they do to them? Abuse. They chose these people yeah, at random and went and killed them. This is self-defense. Right. You cannot, that's like comparing Bertine, bacon and I would, yeah. like to, I would like to jump in here for a minute. The woman with the orange uh, jacket, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to just say to you that the man you were talking about, Jose's uh, the co-worker, the co -worker, his name is Roger Smith, and he actually was on the stand, and what he did say is what Jose Menendez did say was, it is better to be feared than loved. loved. Okay, he did not, yeah. he was not, he did not and like him as a person And he made a point of all. humiliating okay. everybody, all his... Okay, I okay. just wanted to correct you with that. It's amazing, because you all are so well-versed in, in all of this. Let me introduce Dr. Khan. She's been listening to what's going on here, and, and has an understanding of this kind of reaction to a case like this. What's going on? Well, I think we're talking about women who are caught up with the cause. When we talk about what makes people get caught up and save the whales, save the environment, go against abortion, or join the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. Everybody has reasons for whatever cause they're obsessed with. What kinds of reasons make someone obsessed with following a trial? Okay, we have to talk about, it's not just following a trial. It's obsessing over a trial. Mm. I mean, we're all somewhat intrigued with all these Would you criminals. say they're obsessing over this trial? I would say they have crossed the line. They're all very nice women, lovely women, but yes. And what is it that, that creates that? Well, you know, watching the trial as if it's a soap, which so many women have been doing, and men, because it's fascinating, mm -hmm. is one thing. But when you start to attend the case, contact the people, want to have a personal feeling about them, refer to them as if you know them personally, mm -hmm. Eric and Lyle. Okay, but uh, if, you, if, if you would for a minute, I'm going to have to take a break, but look at them. They're rational, well-spoken, beautiful, kind people, mm -hmm. and it, except you say they've crossed the line. We want to find out why you feel that that's the case, and they want to respond. We're going to do that right after this. You wanted to respond to Sandra Khan. Yes. Um, I wanted to respond to the concept of, of obsessing. I think it's important for people to think about on what circumstances people would consider this type of behavior obsessing. One of the other things I do in my life, I work with animals, I go to church. I, as part of church and, and with an, working with animals, I take animals out to visit people in nursing homes, in hospitals, and so on. I take time out of my Sunday to do that, away from my husband, etc. Does anybody say, why are you obsessing? You could be at home with your husband. Why are you going to see this decrepit old lady with this animal? It's the same reason, but unfortunately, there are some people that it's not approved to care about. Mm -hmm. But I'm a Christian, and I care about everybody. Yes. I want, I want all these women to know that I do not question your goodness and I do not question your motivation in terms of your it's feeling genuinely from the heart mm -hmm. what you're feeling. I want you to know that and I think we all kind of feel the same way. These are not evil women. These are women who care about these particular two boys. Mm -hmm. But what makes them care this way and not somebody else? Right and particularly the nature of these people because they are caring for people who have, in fact, committed murder. Mm -hmm. Places that people come from, hidden agendas is what I call them. Something about these boys has tapped into something in them that has inspired them to become what they I'm say, going to call. They say it's not their looks. They, they don't know what it is. No, no wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. They don't know what it is. People who are either addicted or obsessed or involved in something that is way out of the mainstream, they don't know why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. If that were the case, people like me could close our doors so, if everybody knew so why. If, if I were obsessing about something, you could stand here and talk me in the face. You wouldn't be able to convince me. Never. Never, never. I don't do magic. No, I'm, 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 a very, I'm a very, very compassionate person. Yes. Not just for Eric and Lyle, but for my family and mm -hmm. the friends I yes. love. Right. And I have a friend right now who is dying of AIDS, and I try to be there for him as much right. as I can. I Wonderful. don't consider him a bad person. Right. I love him very much. And, and most for him. people um, become involved in that kind of way in terms of people who they 
know personally. Okay, help me out here. Joan, on the other hand, says they're guilty, but is she as obsessive? God, I hate this laugh. <laughs> I like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We also I like Joan. We all like Joan. She's a she's a a, a, a very like interesting that. person. Uh, okay, so we, I don't want to slap a label on okay, her. But, we, but the going to trial every day, becoming such intensity of the passion, this is not healthy. Which okay, doesn't mean you're not a nice person. Okay, no, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to have to take a break here again. When we come back, you're going to talk to a legal expert who's been to many of these criminal trials and he's going to give us his perspective, so stay with us. As you've seen this kind of interaction. Why this for this case? I think that these women identify with these gentlemen as victims and they see the humanity of these gentlemen and the trouble that they've been through. Mm -hmm. And many criminal defense lawyers um, are asked all the time, how do you defend those people? And they're giving an eloquent response to that question. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because in each person that's charged with a crime, there's an element of humanity and you have to give them the benefit of the doubt and I think that's what they're doing here. Wow, well we'd like to thank all of our guests for being here today. For giving us all these opinions, a lot to understand, a lot to see, and we really want to thank you for helping us understand. Keep your eyes open, keep listening, read, don't jump to conclusions, and work for peace. We'll see you next time. White, mother, or cold-blooded killer? You decide, next on Geraldo.